Alright guys, we're gonna do a little heat check on a uh, steam boiler. It's a Utica. It's got a... It's a low water cutoff. Yeah. And an automatic feed. Um, no bypass. That's the way somebody set it up. Electronic ignition with a flu damper, automatic damper. So the very first thing I do is check the water level and I'm going to flush it um, for two reasons. I want to get the, the dirty water that's been sitting in there for a while and also I want to check the low water cut off an automatic feed and make sure they're working. So once I drain it, you know, put the power on and make sure that's functioning and filling. Then I'll go from there as far as cleaning, cleaning it up a little bit and, make, and running it through its uh, its sequences. So I got the boiler shut off right now. I'm gonna open the drain. Like chocolate milk. Oh, it's slowing down. It's like the fourth bucket. You can see it's pretty dirty. Good to put some fresh water in it every year. I always open that. Get drain that out from down there too. Electronic ignition. This boy is literally not that old. I'm looking for the manufacturer date. Right around 2005. I got it drained. I'm going to turn the power on. This should recognize that there's no water or low water and trigger that to come on and start to refill. I'm going to leave this open because I want to flush out any, any dirt in there still. The damper should close, which it did, because that's recognizing no water. And shortly that should fill it up, partially. Yeah, chocolate milk. Yeah, I want to do this for a little bit just to get some of the dirt, muddy water out of there so it gets cleared up. It's almost like killing two birds with one stone. No, I'm just I'm cleaning it at one point, but I'm also checking the, the limits and the controls as far as the low water and automatic feed, make sure that's functioning. That's one of the very important things on steam boiler is. That's pretty clear. Like I was saying, one of the important parts of the steam boiler is making sure there's always water in it. Because um, if it's low or 
doesn't have water in it, the heat exchanger will crack. Um, that's what's nice about the automatic feeds that you don't have to come down here every week and add by manually by hand and keep an eye on it. It will refill when it needs to. It only puts uh, so many gallons in at a time. As you can see, it's shut off. a good spot, huh? spot to put that. <laughs> Anyways, so I closed the valve, the drain valve, and I let it fill up. Well, it's adding it slowly but surely. It's, it's only taking a little time because of it being completely empty because I drained it, but once it gets to, as you can see, there's the height of that, of the sensor there, so it has to be a, above half before um, the boiler can fire. The very first thing that will happen once it reaches its level, it recognizes it, is the automatic damper will open, and then once that opens, then the um, spark ignition will happen, and light the pilot, and then the burners. Pretty simple setup. If this had a bypass, the way I like to set up my boilers is put this in like this, but I will also put a valve and um, a manual bypass in where I can put water in by hand if this well, one breaks. So two, in this situation, I can add quicker, um, rather than relying on this to do maintenance, but it's the way the guys installed it. I like the bypasses because if these go bad, at least the person can have heat until I get the part and return. I gotta vacuum and clean that stuff out a little bit. It's not too bad. Sure, these get hot. Got my gloves on today. A little mark here I put that's where you want it this is the lowest point you want it it will fluctuate up and down when it starts to create steam it will bounce down 
and with the return moisture, it'll um, just bounce around while it's running and stuff. So that's normal. Um, eventually, when it's when the water evaporates from the steam from the vents, this will drop, and that's why this comes into play as far as recognizing that and filling it back up with the low water cutoff um, automatic feed aspect. So. She's starting to get very hot. Oh yeah, can't even touch it. Yeah, so this is nice. It's a nice little tube pipe. Comes in from over here and up and over. And also from the left side, up. Up and in this way. And then these, this right here, is pitched towards the boiler um, and runs back down. That's the moisture that will collect at the radiators. Same thing on this side. You can see this left one goes down there. So. YouTube, I just got done with that uh, steam boiler heat check. Hold on, UPS dude. Um, you know, it was. This is a service contract customer of ours. I've been coming to for a couple years, um, servicing the boiler. It wasn't that there was no heat. Um, it was just more or less a heat check and start up and making sure everything's up to par and running. So that's why I like to uh, drain it, get it down, get all that milky, dirty water out, chocolate milk type water out, and. Uh, Make sure the low water cutoff and automatic feed are functioning, uh, the damper, the ignition, the burners clean inside and outside of it, but he dust and dirt, uh, clean down there by the burners, vacuum it out, um, you can see it wasn't too bad, and uh, just more or less going through it just and making sure everything's uh, functioning. Um, nothing special, so that's it for now. Um, kind of excited more of these are coming in um, more or less I'm waiting for the, the no heats um, which are which are better these can get a little boring over time um, but I'll, I'll keep them coming it is every boiler has different situations not many are set up like that and uh, some have don't have some have low water cutoffs but don't have automatic feeds and and bypasses and, and stuff like that, or it'd be hot hot water, hydronic heating, or um, gas forced hot air that I'll be running into a lot this winter. So, and bring that to uh, to the community. All right, check you guys later. Like, share, subscribe, and comment.